Hello, students. Today I'm going to be talking about um, the multi-stage discovery project. And if it seems a little peculiar, it's because I'm going to be looking over here where my screen is. I'm going to be um, reading off the screen, maybe adding a few comments here and there. I do apologize in advance um, if I cough uncontrollably. I have a little bit of a um, some kind of sinus infection or something like that. And um, I'm not going to say that summer colds are worse than winter ones, but but it's not very fun to deal with. Okay, all right, so um, the uh, multi-stage discovery project. Um, so basically you're gonna be doing several different stages, working from kind of in, um, first impressions um, all the way up to a formal paper. And so one thing that I want you guys to do is to choo choose a poem very carefully because you wanna choose a poem that's kind of in that Goldilocks zone. Okay, we'll see how that works. All right, so um, yeah, what I was saying is you don't want to choose something that's too obvious, too direct, um, too simplistic. I made I made that mistake when I was an undergrad one time. I um, I was a little confused by poetry, and and I wanted when I had to write a paper, I wanted to choose something I was comfortable with, and I chose a poem called "Freedom Train" by Langston Hughes. <clears throat> and it's a poem that I read, and I was like, I got this. I understand it. He's evoking the Underground Railroad. I understand it. And the um, problem was that everybody who reads it understands that. So there's just really nothing to, to um, analyze, or not much to analyze. And, and my teacher, she warned me about it, but I stuck with it because I, you know, I was so comfortable with it. Um, but I just couldn't make much more of it than that initial impression. And, and I ended up doing, I mean, I think I got a C plus or something like that. But, but I... Um, you know, in retrospect, I think if I had challenged myself a little bit more, um, it would have been scary, but it might have been more fruitful, you know, and might have been able to get a better grade on it. It's kind of like the um, idea, you know, in gymna gymnastics, they have the uh, level of difficulty and stuff like that. I, I think that's part of um, what a teacher thinks about when, they, when they're grading papers like that. All right, so, <clears throat> so yes, as I said, you're going to be uh, writing um, there several different stages, going from the very informal note-taking first impressions to the, the paper. Now, um, let's see here. Let me uh, catch my, get my bearing here. Oh, yeah, so you should consider your audience to be someone who knows the poem, who has read it, but brings no special insight to it. The reader is very curious about how meaning is embedded in poems and how interpret interpretations change as new information is gained. And that this might not be the case for everybody, but I do expect a lot of you to have a very different, much more sophisticated understanding of the poem um, in your your final stage, the paper, than you did in those first impressions. Decide on your poem by J July 19th. I will gladly offer ideas on poems with good potential. Yeah, so um, that's what I'll be doing uh, sometime today, Is and today is Thursday. I'll try to come up with a list of poems that you can use that there would be um i guess good material for this assignment all right so the first stage is that first impression um and then with this one just write down as much as possible that is with as much detail as possible that initial reaction to the poem um also point out what things confuse you um what things pique your interest what things do you think man that probably means something you're just not quite sure what it is at this point you know why do you think this poem might be a good good one to use for this assignment. So yeah, comment on why did you choose it also. Um, be candid about any other thoughts that hit you. And you can express anger, frustration, whatever. As um, you know, it's very informal. Again, I'm gonna be just looking at the the details of your thoughts. <clears throat> oh yeah, and try to do this before we discuss the poem in class. Or sorry, discuss the poem in a discussion board and before you consult any other sources. So yeah, if you are one of those people that just immediately goes to Spark Notes, um, then d definitely hold back on that. You don't want to have some other source get into your first impressions because then you can't extricate you yourself from those thoughts. Okay, now stage two is further consideration. So this one is also supposed to be casual. Um, and this one, I want you to follow the advice on how to read a poem. That's a handout that's on the course, in the course document section. And then type a brief paper, um, 400 words. So what is that, about 
about this twice as much as your standard initial post in those discussion boards. That gives an account of how your understanding has changed since stage one. While you can be casual in tone, your sense, mechanics, punctuation, grammar, and organization will be evaluated. So it's casual, but you know, don't certainly don't be sloppy or anything like that. And do try to have, whereas in the first impression, stage one, you can have fragments and and it can appear as note taking. In this one, I do want you guys to um, to do apply a little polish to it. Stage three is when you bring other people into it. So up to now, you should not have gotten any other sources to um, help you out with this. But um, with this one, stage three, you are supposed to. So read and respond to three critical analyses of the poem. While you can be casual in tone, your sentence mechanics, punctuation, grammar, and organization will be evaluated. Um, see my tips for finding sources below. Yeah, so you see that little paragraph. And I've got a link to the ECU's databases, literature databases. <clears throat> so for each critical analysis you find, you should have one paragraph in which you summarize the analysis um, and a separate paragraph, so a second paragraph, in which you express your agreement or disagreement. Um, and within that, you should explain your reaction. So you shouldn't just say, oh, that was crap. You know, you should explain why you think it was um, either crap or brilliant or, or somewhere in between. Each source should generate 300 to 400 words of response. Um, okay, now, um, so yeah, I do give a sense on, give a little tip on where you can find some information. The um, library's list of electronic sources on literary criticism would be a good place. Um, literature online and literature criticism collection look to be the best of these, most accessible and so on. You can also use Joiner's catalog to find books of criticism on the authors. So. When you do a, a search for an author in the Joiner, in Joiner's catalog, you'll want to do um, use the author's name as the subject because you're not looking for books by the author, by the poet. You're going to be looking for books about the poet. And um, so what you'll find, you might find some, some books that um, are straight biographies that have very little um, criticism of individual poems. Um, there are critical biographies that do give that kind of, um, that will get into poetry, the poems, specific poems, and will interpret them and, and so on. Um, so those are the ones that will probably be more helpful to you. By the way, um, I think like Emily Dickinson has 80 books. The last time I taught this class has something like 80 books about her in the library. So, um, I do know that some of you are off campus, out of the state even, um, but hopefully you do have access to a library and, and um, that does have some pretty, pretty, um, pretty good material on, on authors and poets. If you do are turning to the books, that is. Of course, you can tap into EC's d database as long as you're a student. <clears throat> All right, so um, stage four, that is the culmination. This one should be semi-formal. Um, so imagine the uh, the jacket, the suit with the the tie or the um, the nice gown, you know, but not not too utterly formal. Write a brief pair of pair, sorry, brief paper, a thousand words or so. So aim for about three pages, in which you interpret the poem, or for longer poems, one particular part of it, because there are some poems that you just couldn't really deal with adequately in such a short paper. You would have to deal with part of the poem. Your paper should have a distinct and original thesis and should progress in a logical way. Support this thesis with passages from the poem. Consider this paper to be your foray into the ongoing discussion of the poem you've chosen. So you can use some of your stage three sources here. You can bring them into it. Um, you can ultimately agree with one of your sources. You can disagree with one or more of your sources. And ideally, I think an ideal scenario would be where you maybe agree, but you synthesize. You, you agree with maybe part of it, but you build on the ideas of someone else. That, that's, that could be a um, really nice, satisfying kind of um, paper. Um, so yeah, you do have to give pop proper credit to your sources and also to the poem itself, um, citing line, line numbers and so on. Um, I'll give you guys a handout on, on citing poetry. <clears throat> and let's see, I'll also try to provide you with a sample um, of the entire, 
project? Because I know it's kind of um, how should it all look is, is a pretty big concern for you. So I'll, I'll provide a sample. Um, and uh, one thing I would just say is do not, and I just kind of end with this, is do not do a general web search for stage three. You know, I do want you guys to use um, articles that are in literary journals or that are by authors who are publishing in um, university publishing houses. Um, really, you want to get some some articles that are or um, essays that are substantial that have credibility. So don't just do uh, you know a general web search for it. I'm not saying you won't find occasionally good ideas online in those general searches, but just for the sake of you know or you are in college, so you should should um, base base your research around you know substantial credible kinds of sources. All right, so I think that about covers it. Now, again, I just want to tell you that the How to Read a Poem handout, you can find that in the course documents section. And um, please send any questions you have. And um, eventually I will be over my cold and I'll be a little bit more, uh, um, have a little bit more energy to devote to, to you guys. Um, your papers, I should try to, I'm trying to get them to you probably by next Monday. Um, that's another thing that's getting slowed down by my, my health problem. But, um, so, uh, take care and, uh, good luck. Bye-bye.